so I said it a couple videos ago we had to drop the transmission in this car uh, we successfully did so I didn't film it because we already did it and I didn't want to board you guys but we successfully dropped the transmission and we put it back in uh, there were some things that went down that I'll explain in just a second but we do have to pull it in and put some things back together and then after we finish with that we gotta come over here and do an oil change in this car because it is long overdue. I actually decided to do something different with oils today. We went ahead and went with Royal Purple. Uh, we also had to do an oil change the daily. So we got a lot to do. So I started this car and I drove it around in hopes that I change the way that the battery wants to react. Let's see if it wants to start. Oh, let's go! Let's go! So the three things that we're getting fixed on this car as soon as this kit's installed, uh, number one, gonna be the bumper. Uh, definitely gotta get this repainted, and then we're gonna be painting this part gloss black. I don't know why it has like paint on it, but we definitely will be fixing that. Uh, two is gonna be these headlights, because they're yellowing. I don't know why they're yellowing, but we gotta fix that. And then number three, we come over here to the weather stripping. It's like cracked and ripping. I don't know why it's ripping, but we definitely gotta fix that, because I see it every time I open this door. Believe it or not, this piece right here, just this piece, is like over $100. Don't ask why, I don't know why. Not sure if I ever showed you guys this shifter after we installed it, but we installed a short shifter on this car. So first of all, here are the throws. And then it's like, it's extremely notchy and extremely like aggressive. You have to like actually push it in gear. You can hear it, watch. You have to like push it and pull it. It's, it's I like it. I personally like it just because I don't really like tall shifters up here, you have to shift. Um, but keep in mind, the only reason why this car is loud is because we sold the mid pipe, so it's literally just running straight off the header. But one of the reasons why we had to drop the transmission in this car again was because of the fact that my clutch wasn't going all the way down. Uh, so Joe from Z Speed thought that it was the wrong pilot bearing that we installed originally in the car, so he sent out a new one. This is the old one, by the way. Uh, so we sent out a new one. So we got that one, dropped the transmission, we installed it, uh, but before putting the transmission back up, I took a picture of the old one and the new one side to side and sent it to Joe just because we were going back and forth for a whole week, so I kind of wanted to update him. Uh, so uh, right when I put the transmission back up, I noticed that the problem didn't change. Hey, Bella. Uh, the problem didn't change, it still persists. So Joe actually gave me a call on my phone, through his personal phone, and we were talking on the phone for like 20 minutes, dude, trying to figure out what was going on. Come to find out that I have a unique situation in this car that's pretty much gonna fix itself once the clutch starts wearing. And then as far as that rattling noise that we were having on this car, uh, what it was is the, uh, the slave cylinder actually gets placed on the outside of the transmission. So what we had to do was basically uh, take the slave cylinder and adjust it on the bracket closer so that it actually puts pressure on the fork so we wouldn't have that issue anymore. But you see, that wasn't the main issue that day. So after putting everything back, well first I think off the phone with Joe, we put everything back together, right? We did the first initial start after installing the transmission for the second time, and I get this loud rattling noise I'll show you guys right now. In my head, I'm like, dude, I have to drop this transmission for the third time? Are you kidding me? So then I took a video of it, obviously. I sent it to Joe just to kind of see like what was going on, like the, if he knew anything. So I just kind of waited out. I was like, whatever, I'll just fix it. We're gonna back the car out and I'll just go on about the rest of my night, right? So then I uh, wake up to an email from him of him saying, uh, sounds like fly, check inspection plate. So in my head, I'm like, what does that even mean? But I'm like, okay, well, that sounds like I have to drop the transmission. But on my way out the door, I was driving, you know, I was still waking up. And as I was talking to myself, yes, talking to myself, uh, I was like, wait, there's an inspection plate on these cars. I don't know if it's just this car or if it's all cars, but on this car, there's an inspection plate that's on the back of the transmission uh, where you're able to take it off and inspect the flywheel. 
Well, I forgot to take that off when we removed the transmission, so it got bent. So when we reinstalled the transmission, I had to bend that back. And so when I bent it back, I must have not bent it back correctly. And every time you press the clutch in, uh, the pressure plate was like pushing on the flywheel, flywheel clutch, whatever. It was pressing on that inspection plate. So that's what was causing the issue, which is actually right here. So you can actually see. So this is the inspection plate. You can see where the flywheel was hitting it because it was hitting it right here. And so I got home that day, I took off the, the inspection plate and problem went away. But nonetheless, I'm just glad I have this car back at 100%. You know, we don't have to worry about removing the transmission no more, no clutch issues, none of that stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna torque the bolts down on the transmission, uh, tighten up everything, make sure everything's good, and basically just play the waiting game for this car and uh, go from there. Take it on one last test drive, make sure everything's good, and we will park this car. That one's done and over with. This might be the last time you guys see this car until we're ready to work on it. Uh, we took it out of hibernation to install the clutch. And then of course, we were dealing with that and fixing issues, all that stuff. So now that everything's good and ready, put it back in hibernation and I'll take it back out once we're ready for it. All right, now it's time for this car. This is where having air ride suspension comes in clutch. Literally just lift the car all the way up and it clears my side skirts barely barely doesn't look like it does what it does so here's the result of not running an under panel the engine bay gets like pretty dirty only reason why i don't have one is because the other one got messed up but i'm thinking about actually buying another one because yeah this is uh it's pretty nasty so one of these days i'm gonna take off this wastegate pipe because of the fact that we are now on 18s the car goes lower when i air out so like it hits and it got bent as you can see so I actually need to take it off and cut it so that it actually sits above this so that when I air out, it doesn't hit on anything. This is easily the easiest oil change that I've done. Drain plug right here, boom, drain that. Filters right here, boom, drain that. Replace that, put the drain plug back on, put oil in it, you're done. This oil is dark. No, it's been a minute since I've changed this oil. No, that's, yeah, that's not okay. 100% my fault. That's pretty dark. Oh, uh, it's been, I don't want to say. <laughs> Here's the part that I hate. This, there's there's no clean way of taking the filter off. There's not. You just have to accept the fact that you're about to get oil on your hand. I don't know who needs to hear this, but when you tighten the filter, don't ever over tighten it. Because then you run into this issue of not being able to take it off. Oil was draining when ahead and cleaned the engine base, so it looks way better. But let's go ahead and put some oil in this thing. It takes 5.7 quarts. So we got five quarts right here, and we got that small boy down there. Uh, so let's go ahead and pour this in. So if you guys don't know, this is how you get rid of the maintenance lights. I believe it's brake and gas, I think it is. Give it a second. And yeah, so brake and gas, hold it down until it says reset complete. And that's it. All right, so now that we reset it, let's go ahead and start it.
Something about washing a dirty car clean is so satisfying. You guys know that. This car needed a wash and it was long overdue. And just like that, we are all good to go. This was actually a very productive day. Uh, we got that car all buttoned up. So we no longer have to test the transmission for anything else. This car is gonna go in hibernation like I was telling you guys. Um, so when the time comes that we start wrenching on that car, we don't have to backtrack for any problems. Uh, this car got an oil change done today and we cleaned it up. And then we did an oil change on the daily. So like I said, it was a very productive day. Um, as you guys can see, it's still not dark out here. And it is 547. So that means summertime is coming. Honestly, I cannot wait. I love summertime. I'm ready for it. I'm just trying to get this car all set to go for summertime. Summertime is the best time for, uh, of course, YouTube stuff because, you know, a lot of events going on, a lot of car stuff. Uh, so I'm ready for it. Make sure you guys stay tuned. Uh, drop a like on this video. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe already because, like I said, we got a lot of content coming, especially on this car right here. So I'm going to give you guys the actual inside on the next mod for this car. Uh, so there's only about like two or three other things that we have to buy for this single turbo build other than the tune itself. Um, but the, I can't really buy that stuff until we actually get started on the actual build. Or I'm not going to just because it won't really make sense. Uh, but we are going to be buying some welds for the rears. I cannot wait. The only reason why this car is running right now is because we fixed that rattling noise. And I wanted to make sure that there is none, no rattling at all. I wanted to be sure of it. Uh, it's been running for about maybe like 15-20 minutes. I haven't heard anything, so I think we're good to go. I think it's solid. Make sure you guys stay tuned. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Peace out. Stay safe and stay tuned. Listen. 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 Listen.